Hello everyone, in this video we will see how to create an add-on function to get money every second without having to click on anything. Before doing that, the first thing I'm going to do is clear up the code from the last video. So first I'm going to move this onready variable on top, put some space in between this one and the actual variables. Now I'm going to rename our empty node to be game manager since it only holds the game manager script. Next. In the on button press, we had a variable called text. This is not very clear on its own, so I'm going to change that to be label text. Now things should be a bit more clear, and we're going to start working on creating the idle logic. So I'm going to create a new variable called money per second, which will be different from the money variable. The goal here is to have this variable to be updated every second with a value and we'll add that on top of the total money we have. Just like before, this one will be of type float. And right now I'm going to put a default value of 0. Actually, I'm going to change that to be 1. Most of this logic will happen in the process function. The process function is a default function you can find in Godot which happens every frame of the game. So this is what we want here, we want something that happens every time because we're trying to update the values for every second. So in this function, I'm going to write money because we want to update the total money we have. So money plus equal money per second. And if I stop right here, it may seem like it could work at first, but this is actually not going to work the way we want to. So if I add a print statement here with the money in the print statement and if I run the game right after that, we can see how every time the value is upgrading by one, but it's going way too fast. This is not per second, but this is actually happening every frame. And this is because the process function happens every frame. And in our game, we have 60 frames, so this happens 60 times per frame, uh, 60 times per second. So our money will not be changed based on the seconds, but based on the frames. In our case, we don't want that. We want to change that every second. And to do it, we just have to multiply this money per second by delta, which is the only parameter of the process function. And by doing that, if I'm in the project, we can see that our money seems to be changing every second, just the way we want it to do. And as we can see from the engine telling us the default information about the process function, so this is called every frame as the comment suggests but it also mentioned that delta the variable delta is the elapsed time since the previous frame so by multiplying the amount of money per second we have by delta we ensure that this is happening every second and not every frame now while we saw how to change the money per second we can see that our text is not changing and even though we have our values here into the on button press function this function is not called because we are not clicking any button so what i'm going to do here is simply copy and paste the text from before into the process function so now once again i have a var label text with our money and the updated version of the money and by doing that we can see that now the text displays the amount of money we have and every time I click, it adds one, and every second we have also one added to the total value of money. But the display seems to be a bit weird because we can see that there's a lot of decimal points after the number, making it kind of hard to read. So we'll see how to fix that in a second. First, I'm gonna remove the label text and the label text.text .text variables from the unpressed button. We don't need that. We only need that into the process function. And by doing that, if I start the game again, we can see that our text is changing just like before. Nothing is different. We just avoid repeating the same code again and again. And we just need it to be happening into the process function. Since this is called every frame, the text does not need to be updated when clicking the button. The engine is already doing that every frame. Now we can work on improving the label we have so it doesn't show all the decimal points. And to do so, we can use a very similar process to the one for the previous video, which is the string interpolation. So in the process function, I'm going to create a new variable, which I'm going to name money decimal. This would hold the money value, but will display it with only two decimal points. To do so, 
simply have to type quote unquote percentage 0.2 F. And just like we did before, after the quotes, we want to add a percentage sign and then the value money. In this case, we can see that the semantic of this variable is quite similar to the one from the previous video when we were changing the label text. And now I'm going to copy and paste the money decimal we just created and I'm going to add that back into the money label, uh, the money text label dot text. So instead of having label text percentage and money, I'm going to have label text percentage money decimal. Now I'm just changing our variable to be slightly different so it only displays the two decimal points. Now if I run the game, we can see that we only have two decimal points and things are much easier to read. Now, before talking a bit more about this other form of string interpolation we just did, I'm going to organize my code a bit and I'm going to move this label text variable we have outside of the process function. We don't have to recreate that every frame. The text will always be the same. It's always going to be money, colon, and uh, the placeholder value we have, telling the engine we have a placeholder. This doesn't change. The placeholder will change and it stays into the process function, but the actual label telling us we have this text and this placeholder position here never changes so we can move that outside of this function. And to make things neat, I'm going to make sure that the label text is mentioned as a string. We can see it's a string, but it's always better to make sure that the types are mentioned clearly. Same in the process function, I have this money decimal variable we just created during this video. There was no type, now I'm going to change that to make sure it shows that it is a string. Now, if I run the game again, everything is exactly like before, everything works the same way, all is fine. The code we have is now just easier to read. Now, I mentioned that we talk a bit more about formatting strings. So on the documentation page, we can see all the different ways that strings can be formatted. And if we look into the placeholder types, we can see we have a list of different letters, all holding different values. In our case, we can see the S from the previous video, just holding a string. And today we saw the use of the letter F, which holds a integer or a real number. So in our case, it holds a float, and we're making sure that this float is only displayed with only having two numbers after the decimal point. So if I go back into the process function, and I change this line into 0 0.3 instead of 0 0.2, we can see that now we only display three numbers after the decimal point. And if I change that to 0 0.1, there's only one number. I'm just going to keep this number to 0 0.2. So once again, just like the previous video, what we're doing is just converting strings into a more readable format and using um, string interpolation and formatting strings is the way to do it. So this will be it for this video. We saw how to create an add-on function that just updates the amount of money per second we make and that updates our total amount of money. In the next video, we'll see how to create upgrades to improve this amount of money per second we can make. We start with one, we want to upgrade that based on a certain level. So instead of making just one, we'll make two and three and so on. So I will see you in the next one.